has risen from the dead. He is Lord. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He 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 is man. He has risen from the dead. He is Lord. Every kneel must bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Heaven and earth adore Him. Angels bow before Him. What a mighty God we serve. Jesus Kupanye, Jesus Kupanye, Aye Eji Pada, Jesus Kupanye, Heche Buriye, Heche Buriye, Aye Eji Pada, Heche. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I want to appreciate God for the grace that God has given to myself and you to be alive today. It is a privilege, not because we've done right before God, but I believe that it is because that God has a purpose for our today and our tomorrow. And I pray that this privilege that God has granted unto us will, not, will never leave us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. If we look at the word of God that was sent to us today, I am going to team it, rejoice and declare in God the master planner. Rejoice and declare in God the master planner. I want you to look at yourself and say, I am blessed in the name of Jesus. One of the reasons why we need to rejoice, and even many of it are listed in the first lesson. Because the first lesson said, I'm going to read the book of Psalm 96. It said, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord. All the heart. Sing to the Lord, praise his name, proclaim his salvation day after day. Why do we need to sing to the Lord? Why do we need to appreciate God? Why do we need to even think of thanking God even around this time? The reason is in verse 4, 5, and 6. Because it said, for great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. Hallelujah. For all the gods of the nation are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Look at those words. The gods of the nations, they are idols. But God, the most high God, is the one that made the heavens. Is the one that made the earth. Verse 6 says, Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and glory are in his sanctuary. Hallelujah. We need to understand that there is something that I believe. Those that are come to have died, many of them died not because of their sin. 
Many of them die because their time is up. So we, if we begin to look at it that way, we will know that the privilege given to us is because we have a future. And just because of this, we are supposed to even praise God always. We are supposed to appreciate God always. Everything that we do on earth speaks to us in terms of appreciating God. Because we need to understand that God is the creator. Let us open to the book of Acts. Acts of Apostles 2, chapter 17. Maybe when we read that, we will be able to understand the things that God has done for us even within these three days. Acts chapter 17. Let's read from verse 24. Acts 17, it says, The God who made the whole world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by hands and is not served by human hands as if he needed anything because he himself gives all men life and bread and everything else. This is to tell us that some people that believe, okay, it is because I worship God day and night. That is why God has kept me to be alive. No, it is not because it is written here that God Almighty, you cannot serve him by your human hands. You cannot serve him with your thoughts. God can only be served in spirit. Hallelujah. So, and in giving you life and bread and every other thing is to tell you that you need to appreciate God. I want you to tell somebody beside you that I will continue to appreciate God. Hallelujah. But so this said, from one man, he made every nation of men that they should inhabit the whole heart and he determined the time set for them and the exact places where they should be. God did this so that men would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, although he is not far from each of us. So the purpose that God has kept you alive is so that you can seek him. How many of us are actually seeking God? We said Celestia is supposed to have a fasting, a seven days fasting. When many Celestians go to Friday and they read the part that said it is finished, their fasting is done. They started fasting on Monday, they ended it three o'clock Friday. Is that seven days fasting? We need to seek God. And seeking God as is not only by fasting or by prayer or by bowing before God or by being in attendance in church or by being in the church day and night. It is by obedience. Hallelujah. If you can obey God, then God Almighty will begin to speak to you in spirit so that your relationship with him can be made perfect. I pray that God will make us perfect in the name of Jesus. Verse 27 said, God, verse 28, for in him we live and move and have our being. As some of our own friends have said, we are its offspring. So now we know that God is the creator of everything. Even whatever we're going through right now, God knows about it. And because of his purpose for your life, he kept you safe. Not like because you know how to wash your hands, not because you know how to uh, do every other thing, but because he has a purpose for you. And it is written in the word of God, maybe later you can look at it, Isaiah 66, 1, Acts of Apostles 7, 49, that the earth is God's food too. Which means if the earth is God's food too, then the earth is a little out of everything that God has even created. Imagine how heaven would be. I pray that God Almighty grant us the grace to be there. And then we want to talk about Christ. That is another purpose that we need to appreciate God. Let us open to the book of 1 Corinthians. The one that, was, that we read today. 1 Corinthians 15. 
But we are going to look at verse 3 through to verse 8 for us to get the understanding of the lesson of today. For what I received, I passed to you. As of first importance, that Christ died for our sins, according to the scripture, that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day, according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Peter, and then to the twelve, after that he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some are falling asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to the apostle, and last of all, he appeared to me also as one abnormally born. Hallelujah. God has been appearing to most of us, even before this time. If you want to tell me that you have never seen Christ, that means you should have been there. We can see Christ in our doings. We can see Christ in our being alive. We can see Christ in our smile, in our happiness, even when we are going through challenges, just like now. But if we, as the people of God, does not continue to remember the things that we have gone through so as to become better, then it will always repeat itself. Hallelujah. All through the week, many of us, you know, bowed our heads. We became very humble. We, we were listening to all the sermon of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, up to yesterday. We were communicating. We were doing the will of God. But what comes after this? Hallelujah. So I want to tell us something. Imagine Whatever we're going through right now is just the same thing that the disciples went through. That even our Christ Jesus went through. It, remember when Christ went to pray. And while he was praying, he was asking God, If this, can you please just let this come, pass over me. Let, let this thing not even happen right now. And later he understood that if this does not happen, then the redemption of we that are called will not be certain. And because of this, God in heaven took his eyes off his son. He was punished. He was beaten. He was nailed to the cross. And he felt every ounce of those pain. He felt it to the level that he has to call on God, that my God, my God, why art thou forsaken me? And God did not answer him. And when he cried that cry, I want to believe many lost hope. And then many were disturbed. They went into their home. They went into quietness. They weren't rejoicing like before. They were, they were filled with sorrow. They were not filled with happiness. Somebody like Peter is already, has already condemned himself. He's asking God for forgiveness. He's asking God for transformation. And what happened? Well, do it. Christ rose. And the joy that they had before cannot be compared to the joy that they have after the ascension. What I'm trying to tell you is this. We might be going through our time now. And it is because we've neglected God. The same purpose for which Christ come to die, came to die for myself and you. The same purpose has been forgotten by the church. We have neglected Christ. We have not spoken about salvation. We have not been speaking about righteousness. We have not been speaking about sin. We have always speak about every other thing. Blessing. The grace. And all that. Forgetting that the purpose that we are on earth. As read in the book of Corinthians and the book of Acts. Is to seek God. Just to seek God. And now that God took his eyes off the whole world, look at what is happening. Many of us, of us have forgotten that the, the, every government is in the shoulder of Christ. It's written in the book of Isaiah 9, chapter 6. Every, the government is in his shoulder. So when God is mad, the government cannot be alright. What is the government? 
The government starts from the home. When God is not happy, things cannot go well. How can God be happy unless if we seek Him? So we need to rejoice that Christ has been raised. That we know there's a joy of tomorrow coming to myself and you. But while we wait, while we are being silent, while we are in this hiding, we need to seek God. So that the joy of the the joy that is coming to us can be greater than the joy of that former. I pray that our joy will be full in the name of Jesus. If we look at what is actually the word of God saying is this. We need to always sing a new song to God. Always sing a new song to God. In regardless of your circumstance, sing a new song. Regardless of whether you were rich or not, sing a new song. Many that are rich are already dead. Many that have much more money than you are actually asking God now, Father, if you can give me just one more chance to be ill and elderly, I will praise you. But they're not being given the chance. So I want to tell you, rejoice, but not only rejoice, declare, begin to declare Christ to people because God is the master planner. God has already knew that all this would happen. God knew that Christ would go through that. He knew that Christ would feel the pain, but he knew that the glory that is of the later is going to be better. I pray that God's glory will be upon us in the name of Jesus. Let us now finish the second Bible reading. 1 Corinthians 15, verse number 35 through to 50. Now this second lesson is coming because of some people that doesn't believe there is resurrection. Because there are some people that believe that once you're dead, nothing else. So Paul has to give everyone the understanding that dying is just the beginning of another life. And what he was using here is a thing that we do on this part to give us an understanding of what is to come to us. When you plant a seed, imagine that little thing that you planted. It will sprout up and become big in an un unimaginable way. So, Paul is telling us that this art that we feel is art and we feel we can enjoy, we can do this, is nothing compared to what we will become in the afterlife. If you believe there is a hop and there is a down, if you believe there is a right and there is a left, so if you believe there is dead, there has to be some rising, whether it is spiritual, whether it is physical. Hallelujah. So, Paul is now telling us that so it will be. I'm reading from verse 42. So it will be with the resurrection of the dead. The body that is sown is perishable, but it will be raised imperishable. It is sown in its honor, it will be raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it will be raised in power. It is sown in the natural body, it will be raised in the spiritual body. Which means we need to be expectant. I believe this is something that every one of us should be looking forward towards dying. Like looking towards, you know, getting out of this earth and inheriting that which is glorious than what we have. Because in heaven there is no sickness, there is no war, there is no sorrow, there is no death. Imagine, you, you will not even have the chance to hate anybody. Nobody will fight you, nobody will quarrel you. It will be a time of worship and praising God. Don't you want to go to heaven? Don't I want to go to heaven? But how many of us is ready? How many of us have prepared our life to be ready to meet with God? How many of us have prepared our homes so that even our children will be able to say God? How many of us have prepared our homes in the way that our wife, the husband, will be able to say God? Brother Paul continues to say, if there's a natural body, there's a spiritual body. For it is written, verse 45, 
The first man, Adam, became a living. And the last Adam, a life-given spirit. The spiritual did not come first. That is why we've been given back to. When we've been given to, we are physical. We are natural. But after, we become spiritual. We are supposed to live in the spirit realm, even by being on this earth. But many of us are still living as if we are physical body and physical body alone. Remember that the first man is dust, but the second man is from heaven. So if the second man is from heaven, and this second man, which is Lord Jesus Christ, came, died for sin, so that we can inherit life, which means when we die, we will become an heavenly body and we will become one with our Lord Jesus. I want to encourage us wherever we are. Let us remember that if we want to stay an ugly man, we will die and go to hell. We have to become a spiritual man. We have to be spiritually inclined in God. We have to understand the mindset of God. I pray that God in his infinite mercy will give us more understanding in the name of Jesus. So to bring this to a close, I want us to understand this. We need to always, just as the book of Psalms says, sing a new song to God, which is the last one. The second one is we have to always declare the glory of God. The only way for you and myself to declare the glory of God is to speak about Christ to every of our friends, to every of our neighbors. Is to make sure that our conversation shows Christ. Many of us can talk about sports than one, any other thing. Many of us can talk about nobles, about any other thing. But when it comes to the things that have to do with the things of the Spirit, we'll be looking as if we've never heard of it. Many don't even read the Bible until now. Even now, some don't even read the Bible. So we need to declare God. Rejoice and declare God. Declare Christ to everyone because it's the master plan. Now, once you begin to do this, God will plan your life in a way that you will not lose your smile. You will never be filled with sorrow. So another thing that we need to do is ascribe to the Lord the glory that is due to his name. Many of us don't even appreciate God for those things that God is doing for us. You wake up, you don't appreciate God. You have a little meal to eat, you complain it because it's little. What about those that doesn't have? You have you have a few dollars, you complain it. I don't even have money. What about those that even don't even have a coin? You have legs, you have hands. You complain it. What about those that have no hands, no legs? What about those that are blind? What about those that cannot hear? We need to ascribe the glory that is due to God's name. That's in verse 7. And we need to worship God. That's verse 9. The book of Psalm that we read. We need to worship God in spirit and in truth. Worship God day. Worship God at night. I know some of us now, and rabbi, some are lying on the bed. In fact, maybe falling asleep. Some are not even listening. Some are maybe playing games. Some are even maybe on the phone somewhere, you know. But what would be the game? That you said, okay, I've come to God, and you are not yoked with Him, and you are not engulfed in Christ. I pray that God will continue to be with us in the name of Jesus. Romans chapter 8, verse 1 says something. I don't just want to read it up, but said, therefore, there is no, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit set us free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do, in that it, it was weakened by the sinful nature, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of the sinful man to be our sin offering. And so he was condemned to sin. He was condemned to sin in sinful man. 
verse 4. In order that the righteousness requirement of the law might be fully met in hearts who do not live according to the sinful nature, but according to the spirit. What it is saying that if you have not accepted Christ into your life, this is the time to accept Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. Accept him now or denounce, denounce him now. We need to accept Christ if we have not. Some people would say, yes, I'm the celestial, so I've accepted Christ. No, it's two different things. Being a church member does not make you a child of God. You can be a signboard everywhere. If a car stays in a garage that doesn't make the car the house, it's still a car. But if you can give your totality to Christ, if you can surrender everything that God has given to you to Him, it will make sure that even when you go through whatever thing that life has planned for you, just like the disciples rejoiced on the third day, the joy that is coming to your life will be greater than every challenges that you might have faced in the past. So wherever you are, I want you to begin to confess your sin to Christ and begin to ask God to come into you. Ask that Christ will become your God. And if you are already in Christ, ask that Christ will bless you with more of his spirit so that you can not only rejoice in him, but have the ability to speak about him to your friends, to people. Tell God to take away from you those power of shyness. I say, I'm shy to speak the word. Uh, I feel remorseful to, say, to speak the word. No. We have, God has given unto us the spirit of faith, not of fear. Courage, strength, not of fear. So that we can declare his glory. So ask for the spirit of God. Ask for the understand, understanding of God. Ask for that anointing that will give you the grace to be able to minister to people about God. So that as much as you have to the household of faith, the more it is better for you on the judgment day. And as we bring this to a close, let us just begin to appreciate God wherever you are and say thank you Lord Jesus for this grace. For you died for me so as to have life. Thank you Jesus for your love. Thank you for your death. Thank you for, your, for not making me a Judas. Thank you for granting to me a spirit like it unto Peter. Just begin to thank the Lord God Almighty. And I pray that God Almighty will answer our prayer in Jesus' mighty name. Yeshua Jesus Christ. Holy Michael. Everlasting Father. Father, you are the God. You are the master planner. You know this time before it came. And you know that we'll be alive today even before we knew. Father, we thank you. Father Lord, we are committing ourselves to you and everything that you bless us with, our homes, and every of the things that you've given to us. We place them underneath your care. We ask, O oh Lord, that you keep watch over everything in the name of Jesus. We are asking for more of your spirit. For those that have just accepted Christ today, I ask, O oh God, that you begin to direct yourself and bless them with the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. For we that have accepted Christ, for that the power to do more of your will and less of our will, to be able to listen more to you, to be able to act more in the terms of the things that you're speaking to us, whether we sleep, whether we are awake, Father Lord God Almighty, bless us more with the Spirit in the name of Jesus. Make us your glory. Remember that you said concerning Pharaoh that you created him so that you can take all glory. We know that even you created Peter so that you can take all glory. You make Jesus to come to us because you want to take all glory. Now you have created us and we know because you want to take all glory. Take all glory in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask the Lord that we shall be glorified even within this time and after this pandemic even forever in the name of Jesus. Thank you, O Lord, for your touch. Thank you, O Lord, for your spirit. Thank you, O Lord, for your grace. Thank you, O Lord, for the healing. Thank you, O Lord, for your power. Thank you, O Lord, for your serenity. In Jesus, mighty name, we are praying. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. Let us